Hello everyone, it's Weather United here and welcome back to another evening update on the severe weather that is still forecasted by all models by Thursday and Friday. For the high plains and for the deep south including the possibility for tornadoes large hail and damaging winds so we're gonna get started here and taking a look at the timing of this severe weather event that everybody has been waiting for including on the spc where they do have a slight risk for day three still issued for the kansas oklahoma and north western portion of texas so here's a look at the european model on windy.com a new future to this channel is for me to present you all this new map and hopefully you all like it let me know in the comment section below this video so this look at the thunderstorms and rainfall rates that are going to be rolling through and we can see some showers and thunderstorms that are going to be moving over colby in um, the um, kansas area we're looking at rainfall rates anywhere between a tenth to a quarter of an inch an hour beaver city in portions there of uh, say nebraska but the system's going to get more dynamic as we go into the overnight hours of thursday and we can see showers and thunderstorms here really going to be firing up over amarillo texas if you're in miami texas in the panhandle of oklahoma in across the northwestern and western kansas region we're talking about some severe thunderstorms that are going to be firing up here and we're looking at some pretty intense rainfall rates here between about a half an inch to an inch an hour could even be locally heavier than that as this front pulls through and then say by the time we go into three about six about five or six in the morning for central time look at how intense this gets very intense heavy rainfall up here in southeastern nebraska stretching across kansas and the texas region and this is is going to continue to slide further south by friday it gets into the rest of oklahoma northern texas so like dallas texas we got showers we got thunderstorms some of these storms are capable of producing damaging wind gusts in excess of 70 miles an hour we can see some large hail and yes there is a pretty big tornado threat with this because of the dynamics that are coming together i don't think we're gonna see strong tornadoes but it won't matter because we're gonna have quite a few of them that could develop along this boundary and right out ahead of out ahead of it because of what we have and the showers and thunderstorms could gallop their way into southeastern uh, iowa now going into friday is going to be the big day let's back this out right about here this is when the showers and thunderstorms really get going i mean i know it's hard to see because this is there's a couple of overlays but that's waco texas that is a um dallas texas fort worth texas severe thunderstorms including for southeastern oklahoma where you could get very intense rainfall rates large hail damaging winds sure bet you're gonna see a lot of impacts and that continues all the way to uh, um the iowa region into northwestern missouri into central and what eastern kansas city there as well as topeka getting quite a bit of rain wind and thunderstorms as this pulls through and this is going to continue to gallop its way across eastern texas into northwestern louisiana into arkansas my goodness that's a very intense frontal boundary that is going to be arcing its way through and then of course you got the warm front side of things but that's going to be more in the colder sector so we're not talking a lot about an instability if you're in lacrosse if you're in wisconsin rapids we saw in the um the wisconsin region and then by saturday the front pulls through across arkansas and then into louisiana and then by say saturday afternoon the front may actually weaken as it moves further east into mississippi and western tennessee which is good news but there is going to be a lot of wind with this system before we do get to how windy things will get here's a look at your rainfall totals so portions of amarillo texas could get about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch um portions of miami florida in northern texas Texas maybe about an inch and a half but look at these rainfall totals down here to the south you may get as much as one to three inches of rainfall in Alexandria Louisiana maybe four inches of rainfall in that region and then in Little Rock Arkansas about two inches of rainfall so we're talking a lot about rain here some flood problems could be a sure bet and also for Topeka Kansas you're looking at about an inch to maybe a couple of inches and then quite a bit of rain here right along that forcing mechanism where you might get as much as two to four 
four inches of uh, um, rainfall. So there's this is gonna be a problem. Severe weather side and also the heavy rain side of things. But not only that, a lot of lightning with this. That comes with severe weather. So the darker red colors here indicate more lightning strikes in a given time frame. And I believe this is, um, I think this is within a, a 15 minute period, I believe, something like that, but it won't matter very much. Just say darker um, red colors indicate more lightning strikes and pink colors mean frequent lightning. And so by Friday morning, look at all the lightning that's gonna be arcing across the area. This continues all the way to Friday afternoon. So like Dallas, Texas, if you're in uh, Jouette, Texas, if you're down there across Austin, a lot of lightning strikes here. So when thunder roars, go indoors, please, because this is gonna get more dangerous as we go into the overnight hours. Look at this, Cleveland, Texas, if you're in College Station, a lot of showers and thunderstorms there in that convergence zone. And again, that's where we have the potential where we might end up seeing again uh, water spouts, maybe some tornadoes. If any of the storms do form off the Texas coastline, they move onshore. We could see a little bit of um, some spin up activity kind of thing. All right. So take a look at our instability now. There's going to be enough instability for these showers and thunderstorms, especially for uh, Thursday night. We're going to see a lot of the dynamics come together. So let's go into, say, Thursday about, say, two, uh, actually Friday by about 1 or 2 in the morning. You can see, look at how much instability there is going to be. So in this little region, as what um, forecaster Leitman was mentioning in the SPC, you can go check that out with the link in the description below this video. A lot of instability will be in place for these showers and thunderstorms so we're going to be talking a lot about um intense thunderstorms um enough to again cause some large hail damaging winds and that sort of stuff and then more instability down here to the south but again the forcing mechanism will be just to the north of that but either way lot enough instability for these showers and thunderstorms and also enough moisture look at the moisture surge off the gulf of mexico in the low levels this goes all the way up so a lot of moisture advection all the way into say this portion of the forecast period all the way into kansas even into northeastern uh, uh yeah southeastern nebraska i should say and southwestern iowa getting a lot of that moisture advection topped with that forcing along that barrel clinic zone and we'll show you the wind here in just a second. In fact, let's take a look at that wind right now. And so we have those southeasterly winds anywhere between, again, these are sustained winds, 20 to 30 miles an hour, getting close to 40 miles an hour. To be specific, this is at about 200 feet above the ground. So these, um, this is not exactly at the surface because we want to kind of um, take away the backscattering from uh, trees and buildings and stuff. So we get a better accurate representation of what the winds are going to look like at the surface. So we're looking at 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. And of course, those are going to transport to wind gusts across the area with those gusts anywhere between 40 and 50 miles an hour. When you take a look at the low level winds now, this is pretty substantial. 60 mile an hour winds across Texas at about uh, 5,000 feet. So Oklahoma City getting some very strong low level winds. So that low level jet is going to increase and that's going to lead again to the fact of this mid-level jet that is going to be in place. Actually, the upper-level jet, we should say. Look at this thing. This is a monster. By Friday, very strong jet in place over Oklahoma at 137 miles an hour. So again, you can think of right in this area is where we're gonna have a lot of barrel clinic um, flow that is going to take place. And this is where our showers and thunderstorms are going to be increasing because we got, again, this wind that is being curved around this um, positively ne neutrally tilted trough. And so when you get the dynamics, you get the southerly flow at the surface, we get this mid-level wind here, we got some directional shear and we got some speed shear. And any storms, if we get any supercells, these could get organized enough to where we might see some large hail, some organized damaging wind potential and the threat for um, 
uh, quite a few tornadoes potentially that form along this cold front boundary and maybe right out ahead of it. So keep that in mind. And of course, for people that are curious, like my friend Ethan, big time storm going into the Illinois area and eventually event uh, getting into Indiana, almost stuttered there, by Saturday early afternoon. So big time winds there for that region and I hope everybody's prepared for that because there's going to be a lot of wind problems in the Great Lakes not just in the deep south but also this is going to migrate even into the Great Lakes by the weekend time. We can see dew points really quickly are going to be fairly high uh, especially um, as we go into the overnight hours into Thursday and Friday. Dew point values down here in the low 60s mid 60s so enough moisture out there again for um, the threat for tornadoes. All right, now that's going to do it with this video. If you did enjoy this new layout, this new map, I'm going to probably use this in a few of my videos, not every video, but hopefully you all liked the detail, pristine, and everything. All right, I love you guys, and I will be back with you more tomorrow. Not, yeah, tomorrow with another update on this severe weather situation that could or will likely be panning out in the High Plains and the Midwest by Thursday and Friday with a live stream coming your way soon. All right, thanks for watching. Share, like, and subscribe.